good to have a full church this morning, uh, as full as it can be at this time. That's very exciting. And so glad that we can all join together for this time of communion. Um, and also just notice that for those who are a little impatient, it's lack of the service is a little shorter than usual. The sermon is shorter, the communion service is shorter, so you don't have to wriggle too much if you're a wriggly kind of person. I welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ, and I welcome you who are sitting here this morning and those who are joining us online up in that little camera over there. Uh, some folks have already come to collect their consecrated communion wafer, and you'll notice there's a little dot in there because there's a drop of grape juice on the wafer just so that you can have a, a sanitized communion. I must say, it's, it's so weird. I really miss having everybody come up to the rail and the chance to pray for each other and all of those things. But we keep on praying, we keep on hoping for that time, but uh, God has been faithful to us and good to us, and so we keep on trusting in God at this time. Let's open with prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you so much for bringing us together here to worship you, to say thank you to you, to remind ourselves of who you are so that we can live our lives in faith. We ask that in this time you would help us to feel a sense of connectedness to you, to those around us, to those who have joined us online in all the different ways that we join together. And that through your Holy Spirit we would be comforted and strengthened, that we would receive the gifts of faith, hope and love that we need today. So be with us as we worship, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite us to stand as we sing the hymn, Come Let Us Sing of a Wonderful Love. Just to remind everybody that we're not uh, to sing operatically and, and, and spray too much, <laughs> but just to sing quietly. And also, at all times, please keep your masks on. If you need to go out for a breath of fresh air, we won't judge you. You can just step outside to, to go and, and take your mask off at a, at a good distance from everybody. Come, let us sing of a wonderful love.
seat. Loving Lord God, we are here this morning because we want to be learners of you. We want to learn to live lives that rise above envy, falsehood, and pride. We invite you to teach us to be lowly and humble in people who learn from you. Because we pray that prayer, we open our hearts as we say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yeah, take a moment to bring ourselves as we are before God. We are all too aware of our sins, of our brokenness. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against all people in thought and word and deed. In the evil we have done, and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. We hear then the words that Jesus speaks to us. My child, your sins are forgiven. And the words of power that Jesus gives us. Go and sin no more as we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit to help us to live the lives that we are called and created to live. We sing together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. And from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 to 12. And uh, every week I think I write about three sermons to try and figure out which the sermon is for Sunday. And having written two others, a verse had struck me on Monday that I just wanted to share with you, and it's kind of just been echoing around my head. I suppose there's lots of room in there for things to echo around, so I just wanted to share that verse with you. And maybe that was a verse that's been bothering me because God wants to tell you something today. Maybe you're the person that the verse is for. Uh, maybe it's for me. So we read from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 to 12. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, 
as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, his architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old. And Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word to us, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, we pray. Amen. I don't know if you picked out the verse that was bothering me. I, I sent it out on the WhatsApp. But this one just, I don't know, it filled me with hope and a sense of peace. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And over the past few weeks, I've been talking about uh, talking to your soul, listening to your soul, and praying for your soul. And as we spoke about these things in verse 32 of Ephesians chapter 4, we read that as we speak to one another, we should be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. And I invited to you to think about how you need to talk to yourself. If God has called you to be kind to others because God loves them, so God calls you to be kind to yourself because God loves you. Be kind to yourself, tender-hearted, forgiving yourself, as God in Christ has forgiven you. I reminded you also about how the psalmist often talks to his soul. He asks, why are you so disquieted within me? And I invited us to learn to pray from Psalm 139, 23 to 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. As you take those thoughts in your heart that are, are anxious, that are just disruptive, and you allow your soul to raise them to you and God to point them out so that you can change your ways of thinking. See if there is any offensive way in me, anything that causes pain to me and others and God. And finally, lead me in the way everlasting. And finally, talking about praying for your soul. The beauty of Psalm 25, where the psalmist says, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O my God. And to, to lift up everything that you are to God and say, This is me. Look after me. The psalm goes on to pray for protection. But in verse 21, May integrity and uprightness protect me, because my hope is in you. I reminded us of the image of a bent tree. You know these Cape Town trees that are bent by the wind? They remain trees even though they've adjusted to the wind. But they're the trees that just fall over because they're so stubborn. Inviting us to be true to ourselves, to remain true to our hearts and what God has laid in our hearts and adjust according to the circumstances sometimes so that we can truly be the kind of people we're created to be. Then an example I thought of, of Abraham was somebody who was true to his heart and his soul. And maybe we can see something of, of how he thought or what he believed that helped him to become the person that God had called and created him to be. And in verses 8, 9, and 10, we see simple things that, that Abraham did. The first thing is he heard God calling him to go. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. Isn't that uh, an amazing testimony to what we're going through right now? Every time we get together on church, at church, we're like, uh, what's going to be like next year? Are we going to be able to fix the roof? What is, what is it with churches and roofs? Are we going to be able to do this and that? Is it ever going to be normal again? What's going to happen with vaccines? We've all got those questions. By faith, Abraham obeyed. He didn't know where he was going, but he knew that he had to move on from where he was in order to go to where he needed to be. 
and where he needed to be. He wasn't quite sure, but he knew that God had a purpose for him where he was going. Sometimes we so often ask ourselves, what do I want to do? What do I feel like doing? And I was thinking this morning that I should be asking, God, where do you need me? I don't know. I can say of God that God needs me. Maybe I should say, God, where can you use me? Where can I be useful to you today, tomorrow, next week? And then to go off in faith. Abraham had to give up all of the, the creature comforts of life in Ur, where he was part of a wealthy family, where he had all sorts of things. And go and, and basically become a squatter in a foreign land. And so the next lesson besides go was the lesson of being. See, Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac never had the luxury of the city of Ur in this new promised land. They never had the luxury of feeling like they belonged where they had been sent. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. We have this longing to feel settled and established, this longing to have security. It's a basic human need. We want everything to be certain. But then we need to look back at somebody like Abraham, for whom nothing was certain. And it wasn't certain to the next generation or to the next generation. But all that was certain was a trust, a deep trust in God. So we think that Abraham and in those times the idea of living in a city was a good thing. Had left the city and moved to a foreign land. And then we get verse 10. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, his architect and builder is God. I like that. You know what I like the most? Is that it says he looked forward to a city that has foundations. The foundations aren't yet to be dug. They are dug already. It's all there already. And the foundation... I think, is, is a trust that Abraham had in God's nature. And we can have a trust in God's nature because of what we have seen in Jesus. We go forward in Hebrews 2, 12, verse 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Trusting in the foundation that, that God has already dug. Trusting in the foundation that God has revealed to us the, the underlying nature of all things is that a good God who is revealed in a loving Jesus created this universe in which we live. And things don't work out the way we hoped they would, things sometimes get really difficult. Even in verse 2 of chapter 12, Jesus, for the joy set before him, endured what he was going through. He scorned the shame of what he was going through. He didn't let it bother him because he eventually would sit down at the right hand of the throne of God. God is good. Our foundations are difficult. Our, our circumstances are difficult. But the foundations are strong. We can hold on to that truth about God's nature. He looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Jesus says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice He's like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. 
yet it did not fall because it had its foundation in the rock. Here's Jesus giving us words about how to build, about how to live, inviting us to to found our lives on Jesus' values of grace and forgiveness and mercy and kindness. Let those be the bedrock on which you build. And, you know, if you got a builder and the builder just never looked at the architect's plans, you'd end up with some trouble in the end. But I invite us to allow ourselves to be built with consultation, regular consultation with the architect, the one who's designed the foundation, the one who's building us up. We find that we'll start building straight walls that don't have to be pulled down again. We might, as ambitious builders, think that we need a triple-story house and the architect has just designed a single story. And let's stick to the plan or we'll run out of bricks and cement. Finally, that image of the fact that God is the builder. I think we immediately think of Psalm 127, verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. But we can also think of what God is busy doing with us and in us at this time. And remember that this builder is an expert builder who is working on the lives that we are leading. Paul glorifies God now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. According to his power that is at work within us. You might think that your problems are insurmountable. You might think that your resentments and your brokenness and all those things that are just part of who you've become are more than God can deal with. God, the master builder, the one who's built the foundations, drawn the plans, is the one who's doing the work. His power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. So if we're going to have strength of soul, like Abraham who had a tough life but maintained faithfulness, I invite us to think of verse 10 of Hebrews chapter 11, where he was looking forward to the city with foundations. That's a word about life now, the kingdom of God being built now. It's also a word about our eternal hope in God. God is at work doing something good in us, through us, and for us in the present and in the future. Because God is the architect and builder. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for the foundations upon which we are to build. You, Jesus, our rock. Help us to build faithfully on those foundations, trusting in you, in the underlying goodness of you, our God and our King. Even though the world sometimes seems chaotic and unpredictable, the foundations that you give us are certain and true. Lord Jesus, you are the chief architect of creation. You are the chief architect of our lives. We confess that we often build without consulting. We have great ideas of four-story lives, of fancy, fancy garnishes and amazing things. But help us to build according to your plan. What is your will for us? What is useful to to you. And finally, we thank you, O God, that we do not work on our own, that you are able to bring to completion the work that you've begun in us, as you help us to be more like you, Jesus. So we put our trust in you. You are good. You are loving. 
You are kind and powerful. We cannot do anything on our own with great success. But we can do all things with your help. Be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we have communion, we stand to sing slowly and and thoughtfully the hymn, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me, Let Me Hide Myself in Thee. prepare for communion, I invite us to share the peace with one another, and uh, as you know, you can't wander around shaking hands and hugging and all those things, but if you just do the chicken dance to those around you, peace be with you. And you can just go, peace be with you. (laughs) I'm just checking that everybody has their communion wafer, which is sanitarily sealed if you don't have one and you just wave your arm and we can bring you the little treasure box that they're in you're all good they are very flaky because uh what what we've done is we've just dropped a little bit of grape juice on each one and then dried it out in the oven so it's drier than usual and i find the easiest way to open open the packet is just to to rub it together a bit and then uh You can leave it in there for now and just get it out when you need it. We pray. If you join me with the words in yellow. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you praise and thanks. 
Father, all-powerful and ever-living God. It is indeed right. It is our joy and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. You created all things and made us in your own image. When we had fallen into sin, you gave your only Son to be our Saviour. He shared our human nature and died on the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand in glory, where he lives forever to pray for us. Through him you have sent your holy and life-giving spirit and made us your people, your royal priesthood, to stand before you, to proclaim your glory and celebrate your mighty acts. And so with all the company of heaven we join in the unending hymn of praise, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, Lord God, King of the universe, through our Lord Jesus Christ. When the night in which he was betrayed took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. So we declare, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we pray, Therefore, Father, as he has commanded us, we do this in remembrance of him, and we ask you to accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we who receive your gifts of bread and wine may share in the body and blood of Christ. Make us one body with him. Accept us as we offer ourselves to be a living sacrifice and bring us with the whole creation to your heavenly kingdom. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory be given to you, almighty Father, from all who dwell on earth and in heaven throughout all ages. Amen. The bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one loaf. We pray together. Lord, we come to your table, trusting in your mercy, and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy even to gather up the crumbs under your table, but it is your nature always to have mercy, and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may forever live in him and he in us. Amen. This is the body of Christ which is given for you and the blood of Christ which is shed for you. Take it and eat it in remembrance of him. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in the sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all people. Amen. Amen. And let us to be seated. Join me with the words in yellow. We praise you, God, for the world which you created and for our place in it. 
You have given us life that we may love and serve you. And though we have resisted your purpose and misused your gift, you have not left us in our sin, but have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. We thank you that for us he became human, died on the cross, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven. There he reigns in glory, and there he prays for us, and we believe that he will be our judge. We thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit to bring us to a new life in Christ and given us freedom to call you Father. Invite us to take a moment to give thanks. As we bring all our gratitude to God, therefore with all the church on earth and in heaven, we give you our thanks and praise. We dedicate ourselves to you. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit to do your will and bring us with all people to your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And as we give thanks, I'm aware of two birthdays and I think I've, I've forgotten one more, but I know that Nulse is going to be 29 soon. Where are you, Nulse? lost you. There you are at the back. He's not actually going to be 29. And, uh, <clears throat> and Rodney, Uncle Rodney, there you are. He's going to be 18 just now. So congratulations as you continue on the journey to adulthood. I pray that you'll become mature as you go forward. <laughs> uh, we're not able to take up offerings in the usual way, but there is a, uh, a church-shaped box at the foyer that you're welcome to put donations into, but we also... Uh, predominantly encourage you if you are able to give by EFT the church's bank details are on the website uh, that uh, keeps us from having to go to the bank etc but as we stand we'll dedicate ourselves and our offering to the work of God let's stand for our closing prayers Loving God, thank you for all the gifts that you've given us and help us in the week ahead to remember with gratitude all that you have done. As we remember our offerings that we bring, we know that everything that we have comes from you and of your own we give you. So we ask that you take what offerings we are able to bring and use them to build your kingdom here in this place. But more importantly, we stand as a sign that we want you to take our lives, our hands, our feet, our minds, our mouths, and use us to your glory. And so we pray for each other as we say, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. If you can't use these little packies for your earrings or something at home, just drop them on the table as you go out and uh, we can reuse them. Thank you.